Yes, sir, yes, sir. Oh my God, look at all that meat. Look at all of that meat. Oh yes, you guys saw me talk about it the other day. It's already here. What is happening, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video with your boy, ThickF30. Today we have the P3 gauge that is gonna be taking over the top little portion of our side vent in the F87M2. Really excited to get this in the car. I saw it in my friend's M4 last weekend and I, I really enjoyed how clean it was, where it was located, and all of the functions that this thing has. We'll go through all of that in a little bit. If you guys are interested in the product, I'm gonna have a link down below. This is from Keys Motorsports. Keys Motorsports, thank you for sending this out. There's a couple of options that you guys can buy when you order this. You can either get the one that comes pre-installed in a vent for you, or you can get the one where you retrofit it into your own vent. I opted for the one that retrofits into my own vent. Felt like it would be better content for everyone on here. Kind of show you guys how to install it. It seems relatively simple. P3 actually makes a really good video that's step-by-step -step tutorial, super easy. I'm gonna link that down below as well for you guys. But let me go ahead and show you guys what we have in the package and kind of explain the functionality of this P3 gauge. All right, my beautiful friends. This is everything that comes in the box. Starbucks is not included. You get your wiring. Here's the actual gauge. This is like a clear protective piece that's on top of it that comes right off. Then it's just a screen, two little buttons. This little wrench right here will make a little more sense later when we go through the install. Obviously you have the cabling for this uh, display. Nice little decal. Here's the box it came in. This is the control box. So this whole thing actually plugs into your OBD2 port and unplug it when you're not using it and you need to do something else like boot mode or whatever. And then here is our functionality. We have boost vacuum, air to fuel ratio, reads and clears DTCs, exhaust gas temperature, raw vehicle speed, RPM shift light, battery voltage, coolant temperature, acceleration braking timing, IATs, and throttle position. Now, as you guys know, I have the M Performance Digital Display Race Wheel. It does some of these functions, not all of them, but it does do some of these functions. Is it overkill to have both? Probably, you probably don't need all of that, but I wanted to make this video today for you guys because some people don't have the steering wheel. Actually, a lot of people don't have the steering wheel and they're looking for options for some of this stuff. Now, some of these values and functions you can also do uh, via boot mode or MHD on your actual dashboard. But if you guys are not running that stuff or you don't wanna plug things in and you just wanna have the gauge like super clean and simple, this is probably the best option out there for that. So without further ado, you guys, let's go ahead and jump into the install. Here are the tools that you will need to complete this job. All right, guys, so here are the few tools that we will need. This guy, a little bit of glue, and a pick tool or like a sharp knife or even like a flathead screwdriver will work. Just to give you guys an idea of where this is going, it's gonna be going in here. Now we're actually gonna remove this vent and we're actually taking out a few of these fins. This is really simple to remove. You just use a pry tool or we can probably just even use our fingers, but we're just gonna go ahead and pull this out, I'll show you guys how that works. And then we're gonna dismantle it, remove a couple of these fins and it's gonna take over the top portion and it'll look so OE flush, dude. It's gonna look really good. Super excited to get this in. Let's go ahead and start the process. So to remove this vent, you guys, I just took a pick tool, stuck it in on this side and then went through this side down here and it pried right up. And now you can just pull this whole thing out. It literally just comes out as one whole piece and this is what we're gonna be dismantling. All right, so we got the vent out of the car. It's gonna look like this, uh, one whole piece. There's a bunch of clips that run around the back up here and then some down here. You wanna pry from the top, pry it apart like that. You're gonna just lift up here. This whole thing's gonna come right out and release it from the casing. We're not gonna be working with this. Just set that to the side. This is what we're gonna be working with. And if we take our gauge right here, you're gonna see that we can actually replace these top two vents right here. So we're gonna be removing these top two vents. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. But before we do anything, let's go ahead and plug this into our OBD2 port. Just make sure that it lights up, make sure everything is functional, that these buttons work before we install everything. We just wanna make sure that we didn't get a faulty unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into my OBD2 port, make sure it works, and then we'll continue the install. As you can see, we've got power. You just wanna make sure that you plug it in and that you're getting values. 
and that it actually functions. All right, so now that we know that it works, if you guys take a look at the actual vent itself, you see these little separations on the side. It's gonna separate this outer casing from the actual vent pieces itself. We're gonna work this out with a little pick tool here. Press each side there. You're gonna see that it pops out like that. And then you can take the whole thing and just remove it like this. You keep this together and up, it's gonna to stay together. So that's good. You can set this aside. Now, obviously we want to replace these top two vents up here. So we're gonna remove those. Uh, all right, so you remember that little wrench? Here it is, it was taped to the front of the actual unit. If we take our second to lowest vent piece, take this little wrench, we're gonna stick that wrench onto, let's see if I can find a good angle. Basically this little, little piece, this little peg in here, just stick it right onto there, snap into place like that. We'll take our bottom piece, pop that one into place. And then we can take these two guides that we have. All right, so we get it back together like that. So before we actually reassemble the vent, we're gonna take this entire gauge and we're gonna feed it through our vent. So we wanna take this side and run it through the furthest left vent and underneath the flap in the back. So furthest left, underneath. I'm gonna run it through here, under here, the reason that we do this right now is because it's gonna to be tough to do when we're holding all of these pieces together. It's gonna to end up sitting like that. Once we've ran that through, we can go ahead and take our assembly, install this into the assembly. Um, there's no sugar coating it. This part sucks. This thing's a pain in the butt to get together, but uh, that's probably why people opt for the invent option. Get a hold of a million things together at one time. It's not easy. <laughs> All right, so we have it together, pinching everything. We're gonna go ahead and slide it into those grooves, just like that. So that is, the, that is the most difficult part, is keeping all of that together and getting it back into the vent. Um, but once you do that, it's quite easy. Just snap it back into place. Well, be very careful because I clipped off the edge of this lower vent. I'm gonna have to go get a new one. Um, not the end of the world. This is still all functional and it still works just fine, but this vent is now hanging a little bit. So, word of the wise. <laughs> when you're pushing this back in, push from the sides and not the center. I'm an idiot, I push in the center and these little edges are just so flimsy. That little peg clipped right off. Not a big deal. Go grab a new one. Um, it's probably like 25 cents. Actually, BMW, it's probably like 20 bucks. <laughs> Either way, we are good. We have this back in here. I'll have to go pick up a new little vent piece on Monday from uh, BMW. Anyway, so here we go. We have everything installed. This is how it's gonna look. Very factory, clean. Now in their video, they direct you to like cut a piece of the plastic out and run it underneath the foam. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Um, I don't think it's necessary. But if you guys want to, go ahead. Completely up to you. Uh, this thing is gonna work and function just fine without doing that. These are the pieces from the factory vent that you will not be using. These two, and then this little metal bracket. Everything else functions though. You still have your vents, you can turn it, you can move it. Um, still gonna direct air to where you need to go. Gauge is in there, looks good. This all actually goes into our OBD port. This is the side that goes into the OBD port. This is the side that plugs into the control box. And then we simply run all of this. So we're gonna run this through the vent down to the OBD2 port. Uh, if we have any excess, we'll probably just zip tie it. And then of course, just reinstall your vent. Let's head to the car and I'll show you what it looks like. I'm gonna do my best to show you guys uh, exactly how I'm running this, but if you look down through the vent, I have a light pointing up. The OBD2 port is literally right there. I've ran the OBD2 portion of that cable. This is the actual OBD2 port right here. I've ran this portion through there all the way up through the vent. So if we look down here, 
You can literally take this and plug it into our port like that. No cables or anything, super clean. And now we have all of it coming up through here, which is perfect. It's exactly what we need. So you can see that canal right there where it's coming through. So now we've got this box, right? That plugs into this. And this is our control box. And this will go into our control box. That, that proved to be a little task. So there is the control box. And the control box is really the only thing that you want to zip tie to something so it's just not flying around. And there's actually like a metal bracket, like bar right there that has a hole in it. So I just ran the zip tie through that little hole in the metal bracket and then just zip tied the control box to it. So you can see that that box is like firmly attached to it. So that way it's just not gonna move around. Um, I don't care so much about this wire right here. That's fine, it can move around, but I just don't want the box to be flying all over the place in here. So we're good. That's fine. Um, now it's just a matter of taking the slack, kind of tuck all this down here, and then, sheesh, there we go, man. And then I get to do it all over again <laughs> when I buy my, when I buy a uh, new little piece down here. I can't believe I broke that. It is what it is, and it's not that big of a deal. We'll just pop this back out. I can slide in a new piece. Learn it from me. Do not push when you're putting this in. Do not push this little vent piece. But other than that, super clean, love it. Great little addition to the interior, not too shabby. And then down here, hardly any wires showing. Just got the little OBD2 port area. And um, yeah, it should be good. Let's go ahead and turn everything on, go for a little drive and test it out. <laughs> What you got for me, babe? Oh, 0.1. So you guys can get this with orange and orange. Um, it looks like yellow on the camera, but it's like super, super dark orange. Like it matches my gauge cluster. It looks a little different in here, but that's probably just the LEDs being weird. Um, you can do orange and then orange, or you can do orange and white. I went for orange and white. I think it looks a little bit cleaner. Um, so this is battery right here, battery voltage. And then, so those are your RPMs, oil temperature. Obviously your boy has oil temp on there as well. So now we have it in two places. Oil temperature, intake air temperature, IATs, is that 117? Exhaust gas temperature. This is our air to fuel ratio. Um, zero to 60 times, so you can time yourself. Boost. Yeah, two pounds of boost, killing it. Coolant temp, which is the same that we have up here. And then speed, you can put your speed on here if you want. And battery. Very cool. If I didn't have this, this would be like a game changer because there's so many cool things on here. Um, but I do have some of those functions, you know, right on here on my beautiful and performance race display steering wheel. But this is definitely going to come in handy for some of you guys that, that don't have some of those functions. And I mean, the setup is super clean, man, super clean. And all of this is still functional. Um, in my case, it's, it's not because I broke that little thing, but I'll, I'll get a new one. Simple fix. Yeah, man. I really, really like how clean this is. It's extremely clean the way it's set up. I love it. So if you guys take a look at the instructions, you can kind of see what those buttons do. The left button is a recall or holds the readout. Um, right button will kind of sift you through. For the most part, this is pretty self-explanatory. Depending on which gauge you go with, like if you have to do the little retrofit stuff that I did, it's probably gonna take you 15, 20 minutes. 
if you do just the direct replacement, it's like super easy, like five minutes. Very, very simple. Probably easier than my M4 carbon fiber seat backs, which were pretty easy. So for me personally, if I were doing this again, I would just buy the invent option. Then you don't have to tinker with like putting this into the vent. And as you can see, it's easy to break some of those tabs. There's a lot of information like being thrown at me while I'm in the car, which is awesome. I don't think it's ever a bad thing to have too much information on your car, especially when you're at the track and you wanna be able to read things. Um, I love the way that it looks so. It's very vivid, it's easy to read. It's nice, I really like it. So let's go for a little cruise and um, yeah, wrap up this video. For the purpose of this video, I think we're gonna do boost. See how much boost we're, we're doing. <laughs> See how much boost we're putting down. Was it 19? 19 pounds of boost? Seems about right. I like having this thing, man. This is cool. That is so sick, dude. I love it. Wow, double screens. One up top, one down there. Pretty nice. There you have it. The P3 gauge installed in my vent. I like it. It's a cool little addition to the uh, interior. It's got some things that I'll probably use, especially at the track. Um, very OE plus, OEM. It looks like it just belongs there, which is nice. Anyways, guys, if you are interested in the P3 gauge, I'm going to have a link down below. Keys Motorsports, thank you for sending it out. P3 gauge, thank you for making this awesome, sweet little vent gauge. I love it. Definitely going to use it. And you guys, thank you for watching the video. Thank you for commenting, engaging lately. You guys have just been positive and awesome. I've seen very little toxic commenting, which is, which is cool, man. I really appreciate that. So thank you guys for just keeping it 100 and being real ones. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Please do subscribe, comment down below, like this video, hit that bell notification. And just like that, this video is over and we are out. Peace.